Today we're going to look at creating pivot tables to uh, provide enhanced formatting in SAGE intelligence. We're going to work with the date range union report. This report allows us to put in departments. It's actually department range union report and uh, it allows you to put in a department range and uh, run out the report. The sub reports are included. The included sub reports are the department range net changes and the detailed transactions. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run out this report. So I'm going to click run and then it's going to prompt me to enter parameters. I'm going to do fiscal period 4 for departments 190 through 191. And I'm going to click OK. Now this is going to run out the data into Excel and then from there I can do some formatting so that the information is more useful and better presentation. So on sheet one we've got the net activity which is your net change information for each fiscal period. Okay, And then on sheet two is always the parameters which shows you fiscal period, year, and department range and then sheet 3 is your detailed GL transactions for the same set of departments. So we're going to do a pivot table for the net activity first. So I'm going to highlight my table and I'm going to hit insert pivot table and in Sage Intelligence you always always want to cr choose the raw data named range. If you uh, leave it as it is with uh, the range from A1 through uh, whatever that is, um, it's, it's going to possibly get overwritten next time you run the report because that range might not include um, if you have a larger selected department range or something like that. So I'm going to press F3 and I'm going to find the raw data um, format or uh, range name and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do a new worksheet, so I'm going to click OK. Now, since they're union report, if you look in Report Manager, if you look, you will see that the union subreports, the net changes are always going to go to Sheet 1 and the date range is always going to go to Sheet 3. And parameters, according to properties, are always on the second sheet. And that's default for Sage Intelligence. So going back to our Excel spreadsheet, you want to move this sheet to the end. So I'm going to move this so it's actually going to be the fourth tab. So now I'm in my pivot table. And now if you can see on the right hand side you see the accounts and other fields that you can choose for your pivot table. So I'm going to choose the department first because this is needs to be sorted by department. So the next thing I'm going to do is in my pivot table design I'm going to choose a tabular form layout because that's going to do better for a table of data such as what we have here. So now I'm going to start dragging additional fields into my layout and this I'm putting these all in the rows. Oh, Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the subtotaling because you can see that's getting a lot of information we don't need. So I've selected do not show subtotals. Okay, moving along we are going to uh, grab the net information and we actually want that here. We want this in the row labels. So I'm going to drag all my fields into the row label section which is what we want for a tabular style report. And the last two columns, you can see we're just building this pivot table here. All right, so now we've got a pivot table that contains all the net information that we had in the first tab, but in a little nicer format. 
The advantage here is that we can actually roll up the departments. So if I wanted to hide or select by department, I can use this drop down filter and say, well, I just want to see this one here. And that rolls it down into what we want. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this filter and I'm going to format this so that it looks a little better and we're going to use comma and that looks better. There we go. So now we have everything. Next thing we can do is we could add a heading and that's 14 West net account activity. We can insert a couple spaces here and we can say for, whoops, we're going to do this in a formula, so it's going to be for fiscal periods, and we'll do and plus, and we'll go to our parameters. We're going to do the first fiscal period, and then we can put the last fiscal period as well. Let's see. Two, and then we'll grab the second parameter. That way if you have multiple fiscal periods, it will come out looking like that. And we could say departments here. Go equal departments. And plus parameters, the from. And plus two and plus the second department range. And fiscal year. And we can just say 2016. So now we've put headers and we can make them look a little nicer, bold, Things wrong here, so let's fix that. That's better. There we go. All right, and the last thing we can do is we could highlight our pivot table, and if we want, we can change the design appearance a little bit, such as this one here and now we've got a pivot table. So now we've created the pivot table. It looks nice. We like the way it looks. I'm going to name the tab. And now I'm going to go back to Report Manager. I'm going to save my template. When you're saving a template in Report Manager, you always want to place your cursor in an unoccupied cell. So I'm putting my cursor in C1 because there's nothing in C1. If you don't do this, sometimes you'll get an Excel is busy type of error message. So that saves that possibility. So I'm going to go back to Report Manager. I'm going to highlight my department range union and I'm going to click Save Excel Template. The next thing that happens, it's going to ask which workbook you're using to uh, convert to a template. And this happens to be the only one I have open, which is also a recommendation when you're working with templates. Make sure you only have one uh, workbook open because otherwise you have to pick from a list of all those open workbooks. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to ask me if it's OK to clear the parameters sheet, which of course it is because my parameters are on sheet 2. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to confirm the template name and then I'll get the prompt whether I wish to um, overwrite. 
and I will definitely turn off the save data with table layout because I can make a report large and it's completely unnecessary. So I'm going to hit yes and confirm overwrite and it clears out your spreadsheet and now it gives me the confirmation that the template has been linked. To test and make sure that that actually did happen I'm going to highlight the report union again. I'm going to hit run and I'm going to give myself my ranges and hit OK. And if everything went correctly we will open on the pivot table and it'll look good. So here we are and everything worked. So that is how to create a pivot table in Sage Intelligence and create and link to your template.